water temperature, amount of daylight, what really triggers those bass moving up in the late winter and early spring? Well, as you can see behind me, I've got a lot of ice here, but with the days getting longer, the north bank is just starting to melt away. And I wanted to go underneath that water with the camera and do some investigating myself. So when a little bit of that ice melted, I was able to do just that. And I found some really interesting stuff. Let's go ahead and start off on this shoreline right here. This is where traditionally in the springtime, I have several bass come up every single year, fan out beds and spawn. So I wanted to take the camera that direction and see what I could find. After a minute or two of investigating, I didn't really see any life whatsoever, not even any panfish up there getting in that water that was a little bit warmer. So I turned things around and came back towards my dock and my floating dock that is right here and you can take a look at it. As I got the camera towards the floating dock, immediately I started to see life and I started to see bass. Now the interesting thing is here, that water temperature is hovering right around that 40 degree mark. And I saw four bass real quickly underneath the shade of this floating dock. So the sun was out, it is starting to warm up the water on that north bank. The bass clearly wanted to be up where that water was starting to get a little bit warmer, but they still preferred to be in the shade, which I found really interesting. And the camera that I use underwater here does have a depth sensor on it. And these bass were hanging around that two to three foot mark. So they were really shallow, even though this water was extremely cold. And as you can see right here, you know, there's still a lot of ice. The ice is still pretty thick. And as bass anglers, we know that water temperature is just such a critical factor throughout many of your daily decisions. But the older I get, the more I fish and the more I listen to others out there in the bass fishing world, it seems that the amount of daylight really triggers big seasonal movements. And let me go ahead and explain that just a little bit more. Here on my own particular lake, it's usually around that mid-April to the first part of May when fish tend to be really locked on the bed strong and the spawning process is going on. As you know, every spring is different. Some springs have extended cold periods. Others get warm really, really quickly. Well, it does not seem to matter no matter what that water temperature is, when it gets to be around that time of year, bass are coming up and moving up towards the shallows. I'm catching bass in very shallow water, whether it's you know 41, 42, 43 degrees, or it's pushing that 60 degree mark. Now, daily temperature fluctuations may drive them off of the beds, then they come back up and things warm up. And when you take a look at these here, we've got three smaller fish. I know it's really difficult to determine with the camera underwater just how big they really are. I mean, they're three Three nice size fish but when you take a look at this one right here that is one I would like to really hook up sometime especially in this shot when this other bass comes in front of it the one behind there is clearly much larger in size and throughout several different shots you can see where it's just kind of hanging out right down there on the bottom is the smaller fish. I'm gonna kind of take a guess around that two pound range. You know, they're more likely to move around, but this footage is not in slow motion. Okay, this is actual regular speed and just look how slowly these bass are moving. Now at one point where I did get the camera real close and I spooked one for a second, it did take off quick like we would expect. But when they aren't bothered, boy, their movement, their tails and everything, it, it looks like it's in slow motion, but it's not. So what can we learn as anglers with this situation that we've got right here? Well, when those days are starting to get longer, you can't dismiss the fact that you could have some good fish shallow. And what this really taught me is that cover, that shade is still so critically important 
even in the cooler water. You know, we've seen bass out cruising in the shallows on that sun, sitting on boat ramps on the concrete, but that shade is still such a critical factor. Here in a very small area, we had four bass, including one really good one in a super tight spot. Now, how would I have caught those? Well, there's several ways I would approach it. I love to use suspending jerk baits this time of year to try to get them to react and maybe bring it parallel along this floating dock. You know, but clearly some sort of soft plastic work really slow there along the bottom. You can just picture what those fish would have been like as they come up to investigate and just nose right down to it and look at it. And you can just imagine in your head that that plastic would just have to sit and sit and sit and sit and sit. So when you run across these high percentage areas, even in cold, shallow water, like a dock here that's providing shade, you can probably be fairly confident that there's gonna be something there, especially like in a stretch that I have here where there's just not a lot of cover. This floating dock is the primary piece of cover here for probably about a hundred yard stretch. I love learning about bass behavior and that is exactly why I was so excited to get this camera under the water and do some investigating and every time I do that I learn so much. And hey, if you would like to watch a video on one of the big concepts that changed my bass fishing, go ahead and check this one out right here and make sure to go out and encourage someone today. You never know how you might just change their life. For the Bass Fishing Life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.